Hi there, welcome back to that crystal chamber. I have my sisters to keep me up. In torment tides of Numenera, we have just woken up again. <laughs> we are healed strangely from our <laughs> immeasurable fall. Now let's look around and see what we can find out about this strange, strange chamber. Yes. A mechanical arm lies on the floor, presumably broken during your fall. Sparks pour from the arm's shattered housing, filling the air with a greasy stench. Hmm. We have neither law machinery nor quick fingers. Attempt to scavenge what you can from the arm's housing. We could examine the housing, that's what we should do. Sharply pointed apparatus that formerly topped the device appears burned out and useless, but the equipment in the base remains at least somewhat operational, as a constant stream of sizzling modes can attest. We'll still attempt. Let's let's find out. Aha. <laughs> oh we can oh we can get assistance. Let's see. We would get to 85%. He'd get to 95 and she'd get to 100. Maybe we'll, we'll still need the might. I mean, so we need to be careful. But she doesn't need it, I think. And she's getting it like to 100% exactly, so we'll use Calisteague's abilities. Taking care to avoid the sparks, you will extract several handfuls of shiny trinkets and coin-like objects. You recognize their value at once such objects would be accepted as shins, the informal currency in most regions of the world, so you gather them up and take them with you. And spray flesh. Yeah, that's actually something that you can get in the real world as well. It's like, yeah, it's healing you. <laughs> Like it, you can spray tissue on on wounds and yeah. So let's leave the device alone now. Let's see what yes. what's going on with this chamber. Sunlight falls through the ragged hole in the roof onto the shattered residence chamber. It's hard to believe that you did this, that you plummeted through the curve of the pale blue sky, crashed through the dome and broke this delicate machine with your own body. It's hard to believe that you are still alive. Four mechanical arms hang over the center of the device, above the cracked semi-transparent crystal of the sarcophagus. The fifth arm lies broken on the floor among the scattered synth and crystal shards, and a metal ring surrounds the array, dented and broken by your impact crater. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's take it all at once. Take a closer look at the circus fakers. The padded interior beneath the coffin's cracked lid looks like it was made for a human body. Despite the damage, you don't see any way to open it and get inside. You glance between the sarcophagus and the needle-like protrusions at the ends of the arms above. Seems likely that using this chamber would not be a pleasant experience. Hmm. And sometimes, at least in the early access, it was like you could take another look and maybe you would see more, so we'll do that. Maybe your imagination, but some of the cracks in the crystal seem shallower than they were before. And now, all right, it doesn't... It may be that we will we'll see something in time. There are some... Easter eggs that you can just discover like that, but not here. So we'll examine the suspended arms now. Cables run from machines along the dome's walls to the base of the suspended arms, each of which is capped with long needles, aimed at the cracked coffin-like chamber at the center of the platform. Gem-like lights flicker dimly at the bases of the arms. 
The needle-like extensions at the ends of the arm glitter in the dome's faded light. A number of the lights at the bases of the arms have gone out. And the metal ring? You feel the slightest hint of resistance every time you cross the ring, and now that you're paying attention, you note that your breath is echoing in your ears, as though you were inside a glass dome. When you step outside the, outside the ring, the feeling passes. Creepy. The ring seems to project some kind of field, like a protective dome around the sarcophagus. <laughs> and we hit through that. Examine the shards on the ground. Maybe we can get one of that and, and use it. Jagged fragments of crystal are intermingled with synth from the shattered dome above. The crystal shards glitter in the light like captive suns. We'll pick one up. Again, the crystalline shard, the light melee weapon for speed, plus two damage per effort applied. That's not too bad. Maximum plus six. It's a good weapon. And 15% on weapon attacks. Alright, at the rim of the crater you find a sliver of crystal. That's that thing, the crystalline shard. Sharp as a dagger on one end and smooth on the other. It might make a usable, if somewhat crude, weapon. Are there other use useful shards? So, through the remaining pieces of crystal, but they are too small or too unwieldy to be of any use. Alright, that's enough. Let's step away. What more can we find here? Let's see. By pressing tab you can also almost see, always see what is interactable. Broken fragments of the domed ceiling are scattered on the floor. They appear to be made of transparent yes, synth. Now. What's here? There's something lying here. What do we have here? Come on, take it. Doing it now. I don't like the smell of this dome. Let's go. Soon. Fine. Ah. I want to loot this. Can I do that? Please? Thank you. We have an encephalic rush. <laughs> it's some kind of a potion. It's three points of intellect. Very helpful. And speed. Very helpful in combat. So there's something more we can do here. We can communicate with that strange machine here. On it. Are that three eyes, or what is that? A slate black, unimpressive device hunkers before you. I'd say this is impressive. I mean, it looks like a very comfy seat, but otherwise, it's pretty impressive. As you reach out to touch it, the triangle of lights on its casing blazes into life, and an image unfolds in your mind a towering crystal arc rises over a jagged grey landscape. The air is dead and stifling, and there, at its emerald peak, the image collapses, leaving you staring into the device's tri triangular array of lights. Command me, the device, or the intelligence within it, says each word carefully etched with distaste. Who are you? Your command was not understood. The intelligence says with clear satisfaction, sounding for all the world like it understood the question, but is choosing not to answer. Command me. What was that arc you showed me? All right, all right. I recognize. What commands do you recognize? The three lights throb irritably. Heated air sighs from the device's winds, and then... A towering list of commands races through your mind, far too fast to read. You rub your eyes, groaning, and the intelligence chortles. Command me, it says smugly. Could smash it? No, that's not ours. I mean, we're, we're clever and we're intellectuals, so... Show me that list of commands again, slower, please. Anything, the list pours through your mind even faster than the last time. Command me, the intelligence drawls. 
Uh, we'll try that again. Nope. Show me the dark again. The device's triangle of lights throb in time, the growl of the engines within its casing and the mental image unfolds once more. See a huge crystalline arc on the jagged field. The arc is divided into rectangular cells, all of which are numbered, and they all appear to be transparent and empty except at the arc's pinnacle, one cell is lit in a brilliant pulsating emerald. The number zero is printed on its side. Well, examine the jagged wasteland. Dry grit whirls across the empty plain, many kilometers beyond the arc, the faint outline of what seems to be a broken tower except that it is slowly stretching into the grey air. And if we do that something again, it's just because we're so keen on exploring that we need to know everything very exact. Far beyond the arc, the broken tower reaches for pale, red-threaded clouds. Creepy. An amnesis. Yeah, we'll try to remember more details about this strange place something we can do and we can do it 80 or 100% uh, let's invest something 100% is okay I think <laughs> the memory blossoms you stand before this arc eyeing the last two active cells in one's impenetrable Lugum Vu unleash cell 29 you say and a twisted artifact appears before you you claim it with a faint smile watching the light fade from the cell far above. You flinch from the memory and it falls apart as you raise your eyes to the arc as it is now. Cell 29 is dark now, only cell 0 remains. Close the image. Release your mental hold on the image of the arc and it collapses, returning you to reality. Command me. The intelligence says sulkily. Hmm. Examine the outside of the device. An indignant hum rises from the intelligence's engines as you examine its ancient casing. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. You step back and the hum fades away. Unleash the contents of cell zero. And we found a cipher. Numenera objects that can trigger a powerful effect, but can only be used once. So, cell zero will now be unleashed. The intelligence spits. <laughs> Devices lights flutter with incandescent shock, then focus on you flickering. Please be advised that the object you are about to receive is completely safe. Use no caution whatsoever. The strange contents of cell zero materialize before you. Warning, all cells are now wakened. Shuddering, Lugum Vo. The intelligence's lights wink out, one by one. <laughs> yeah, it's safe. <laughs> An unstable detonation. Wow, six energy damage and four to all characters in range. So it's kind of um, an area damage thing. Nice. That will be useful. Interesting that a cast-off can command the changing God's machines. Aligon says he crosses his arms around his chest. How do you do that? Calisti rolls her eyes at Aligon, then she looks to you. You'll never stop gnawing on this bone, you know. The truth is wasted on him. She gets a glint in her eye, though. I admit curiosity. How did you do that? Well, um, we're clever, so we're not telling everything, but I, just let me remember something. I knew it, Aligon says, bearing a sav savagely triumphant grin at Calistique. Meaningless, Aligon, she clearly has basic skills and knowledge from the changing god having been in her body. Who's to say there aren't even more specific memories locked away in there? And what she thinks is how many memories this child might have access to. I must know. 
Interesting. In this world, then. What's this? Tiny glowing modes float through the interior of this tower. Each one is surrounded by much smaller nodes, like thousands of worlds circling their suns. Ah, that looks awesome. And here? The flexible tubes that are attached to this machine appear to be later additions. Someone cobbled the device together, but its function is unclear. So I think we, we've explored everything in this area, so let's leave it for now. Fine. Let's go to the Reef of Fallen Worlds. I need to talk to you. Aligon needs to talk to us. I need to talk to you as well. Um, the series will be in mostly in episodes of about 20 minutes. So, uh, just so you don't have that big chunk of episode at you. And that you have, on the other hand, some something to watch. That is not very short as well. So, for now I'd say thank you for watching. And happy gaming to you. Next time we'll examine the reef a little bit further. All the strange things that can be found here. These... I don't know what it is, and the flying tar spots here too. What will we find out? Let's look at that next time. Happy gaming to you. This is Immanuel Kahn, signing out.